Hello everybody and welcome to a really super short blender video where I'm just going to quickly talk about how I handle um, weapon handling in blender and how to have IK um, limbs kind of handle a weapon. Um, usually what I do is I start off with a single bone that's going to be attached to the mesh that is the um, weapon itself. Right now I'm just putting it in place just making sure that it's directly um, sort of centered on the weapon. Um, it's already kind of linked to the weapon's mesh. I'm not going to show you how to do that. If you don't know how to do that, look up a tutorial. I'm not going to really explain how IK works either. If you don't know how that works, uh, you can find that anywhere else. There's probably a hundred videos explaining that, but um, right now I'm making a second handle for that. I'm going to be making handles with these bones that are attached to um, the main bone that is the weapon. And that first part there, that fatter part of the bone is going to be where kind of the palm rests and the skinnier part, the point is going to be where the fingers go. So um, the two hands that are going to be handling the weapon are going to be in those two positions. Um, I'm going to set up the IK here. I'm going to give show quickly how to set up IK. Well, not how to set it up, but how to just um, set it up through the bone constraints menu. I'm not going to show you the ideal way to set the bones, but um, what I'm really doing is showing the targets that you need to have in mind for it. Uh, quickly, speaking of the targets that they need, we're going to rename the bones just to make things a million times easier. I'm naming this one near handle, far handle, and the weapon. And I'm just rushing through this because um, it's kind of a simple process and I just want it to not be something that takes a long time. This is a quick thing that I'm just showing you my method. Um, so I'm going back to the IK and I'm making sure that the right hand is attaching to the um, near handle. Um, the names of these don't really apply for melee weapons. You could just put handle one, handle two. It's just easier to understand it for me with um, weapons like this. And we do the exact same thing with the far handle. And um, that one's going to be kind of where the foregrip is. And we just set the chain length to the amount of uh, chains you have in the limbs. And this one specifically, it's two. And I also have to put the um, poles in there just to make sure that the IK is kind of a lot smoother and it does what I want it to do. Um, again, this video isn't about explaining how IK works, it's about how I'm handling uh, you know, where the hands and the arms react to where the weapon is. So um, now that we have all these kind of handles on there, we have to attach them to the actual weapon. So what I'm doing with the keep offset here is I'm making it so when I move the weapon around, the handles move with it and those um, arms are kind of trying to move to where the handles are. The wrists are trying to move to the fatter end of the um, target bone. And uh, so that's making it so that the wrists are kind of going where you want them to go, but the hands are free. And what we're going to end up doing with the hands in a second after I reset the position of this um, animation or this uh, armature is I'm going to go over there and put a bone constraint on those as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put copy rotation on. So the hands are going to copy the rotation of the um, targets for those handles. So as you can see, when I put it on the right hand, it's matching the handle um, with the grip. And then when I change it for the right hand, it's matching the rotation of the bone on the foregrip. So when I move the weapon now, you see that they're going to perfectly match um, those handles that are on the weapon. And if I just get it into an appealing position like this, you can see that things are already coming together and it's kind of looking pretty good already. Uh, and you can move those handles around any way you want in relation to the uh, weapon bone. And that just makes it so that you could very nicely fine tune where you want the weapon to be gripped. Um, like if I move it right here where he kind of just has the fingers wrapping around the edge of it. Even if I move the weapon around, it should stay pretty, um, pretty much in place there. And the reason that it was moving at all, uh, in that particular instance, away from the grip where I wanted it, is because the um, handle is actually overextending because uh, the arm isn't quite long enough to reach where the handle was. And that's quickly fixed by just slightly rotating the weapon or modifying your mesh because uh, as you can imagine your arms are only so long and you can't reach something that's too far away so it makes sense. 
Um, right now, um, the arm isn't overextended anymore, so it's in the perfect spot. So if I move this around, the uh, hands should stay perfectly in place. And since we didn't put the IK on the hands, they're going to stay right where we want them, but the arms are going to adjust. So I could do something like angle the gun or make it shoot like this, and we'll animate that in the timeline at some point. Um, but it looks pretty good. Uh, this is a very simple mesh, but if we had a more complicated mesh, I imagine this would cut down a lot of work of manually animating some kind of um, shooting or something like that. Like right here, um, you can even have the character cock the weapon like this. And since those are being animated in the local transformations in relation to um, those weapons being offset, those handles being offset from the weapon bone, um, you could have one of those cocking animations like I just demonstrated, which wasn't really an animation, I was just moving it. That cocking animation could happen completely independent of where the arms are moving. And you'll just cock the weapon, and you have that animation in place, but then you could have the person or the character moving the weapon at the same time, and it would still be convincing. So, you have the cocking animation in place, you animate it, all with that local transformation, and then you animate the character tilting the weapon, and it's still going to tilt the weapon and do the cocking animation at the same time, almost like it's blending it. And um, I thought that was interesting. I thought, um, I'm sure a lot of people probably do it this way. There might be a slight variation because a lot of people like to use um, the influence variable of certain bone constraints so they could pick up weapons or do certain things that way. Uh, or interact with certain aspects of the weapon, like the uh, cocking handle, um, where you can uh, have a bone that would kind of adhere to the um, position of the hand with a slider. Um, people might like doing that, but um, I thought this was interesting enough to make a really short video and share it. Uh, hopefully, I didn't go too fast, and um, hopefully it was coherent. I did it all in one take because I didn't think it was kind of important enough to edit together but um i did think it was important enough to share if somebody might think it's interesting um then like the video um subscribe and i'll see you in the next one see ya bye